I wrote this thing one time, not to be a self-quoter, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, if only we could go a day talking to people instead of our idea of them. You know, because we have this projection, this sense of who people are and what they're feeling and what their story is and what their motivations are. And we also make judgments about, you know, their character, their value, etc. And that just shaves everyone down to 1% of the fullness of what they really are. And it makes you, it, it, you know, it, it, <laughs> that it also has a, an issue with, you know, people feel that judgment makes them, you know, better than other people. They judge others so that they feel like if they diminish someone else, then they raise themselves up in their own hypothetical hierarchy in their mind. Right. But really what you're doing is generating this a negativity, and that negativity is like a poison that's just draining and filling inside of you the more that you perpetuate that way of thinking because the way of judgmental thinking, when you diminish someone else, it sh you know shifts the ultimately really the neuroplasticity of your mind, and so it shapes the fabric in which you begin to see reality and how you exist in the world. And so your world, if you focus and perpetuate judgment like that and diminishment, then that influences the way that you see everything, and that ultimately <laughs> puts you into this, you know, this uh, world in which is is filled and driven by that and. It becomes, you know, you become the very thing that you're um, using to uh, diminish others with. And it's just a really nasty, sad sort of path that is very, very common, you know. Um, I think that we could, you know, to your question earlier about how can someone learn to accept themselves, I think if we, you know, take what I just described and apply some of that generosity and generousness and gentleness to ourselves in the same way that we might do it to other people, it can be really, really uh, empowering, impactful. Because if we look at someone else and we go, you know, oh, this person's an idiot, uh, I don't like them, they look stupid, whatever, um, then you perhaps using some mindful awareness, you could pause, you could look at them, you could say, you know what, I actually haven't really talked to them that much. Maybe maybe even the old if you spot it you got it situation is happening here something about them is is reflecting deeply into me and that's why it's sort of triggering me and i'm noticing you know myself a part of myself i don't like in them maybe i should approach this moment with curiosity and actually speak to them um naturally with an uh, an open mind and an open awareness as opposed to approaching it with this level of assumption and judgment we can do that with other people. And if we do that, we're always surprised, you know. Um, we're all, we'll always find more about the person. You know, people are these uh, infinitely deep wells of, you know, just of possibility of being, of experience, of thought, of emotion. And it's only up to us to be open enough to be able to see and receive that. Um, but we can take that same process that we might use on someone and we can turn around and use it ourselves. We can go, I, I am making these judgments about me. I'm making these judgments that I'm, you know, stupid or uh, unlovable or ugly or not confident, not powerful in my life. That I don't Just have not enough and not worthy. That's what mm -hmm. all all of those kind of things on the surface boil down to. Like I'm not worthy or I'm not I'm not lovable. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I like to go, let's, let's look at that. And then let's so say, like, where are the facts? What is it in this room? Point to it. Where is it? What's supporting that argument against you right now? It's like, it's just not there. You know, it's not there. It's the, it's the, the story of the mind that's being held on to from probably, you know, 20 years ago that you're still allowing to influence you. And so giving yourself some of the same grace and spaciousness that you would give perhaps someone else, and that sounds weird, but like looking at yourself with an open mind. Right. You know, it's really valuable. And that's why, you know, one of the chapters one, or one of the parts in my book is called self uh, healing is self discovery. You know, that's really what it is. It's looking inward and beginning to 
accept the parts of us that are creating, you know, that, that are in pain, that are suffering, the the parts of us that have a level of yearning for more, uh, any of this type of stuff, we have to explore that because we can't take action if we don't know what it is that we're working with. And so being able to really look at ourselves with an open mind, to slow down, to relax, to allow ourselves to see the good things, the negative things, you know, the challenges, um, our gifts, and mm -hmm. with clarity, really will help us understand uh, and discover these elements of ourselves that we wouldn't have access to otherwise. And it's through that process that we then learn, you know, what our path, the next step in our path is going to be. Yeah. I love the emphasis you're putting on curiosity as the tool. Like that's the tool to get uh, acclimated with, to get acquainted with, right? Mm -hmm. Because that self introspection self-introspection it requires a curious mind and we were kind of i was fed a line curiosity killed the cat as if it was some type of bad thing to become curious more curious even about others especially when those feelings of judgment come up it's like we were taught stranger danger we were taught all these things of like just like shutting people out instead of leaning in mm -hmm. and i find that curiosity to be so empowering in the ways that you're saying because like we truly don't know and i you know you don't know what someone's carrying what someone's been through um even in the worst of situations i just i, I think that that curiosity can cut through so much um and it can be absolutely healing not not oh, yeah to, not something that killed the cat something that he, <laughs> that's something that healed the cat <laughs> that's right yeah i mean it, it really is man i mean it is it's it's i think it's been the through line for me for everything has been being just curious about my mind being curious about you know insight about wisdom about you know the the experience of meditation curious about other people and like wherever you start you know exploring your own mind and looking inward you see how expansive and rich it is and then at a certain point you realize oh everyone's mind is like that wow, like if I'm open enough and present enough, I can begin to experience the deepness and richness of what everyone has to offer. And it's only through, if you get rid of and let go of your this your assumptions, your story, like the, the preferences in which you've identified for whatever culturally imposed reasons that you should be talking to, like this person or not, you just meet someone right where they are. And like as a human being, you'll find that everyone is like incredible you know you just have to be open enough to be able to see it you know and, and there's something that we can resonate with in all life experience truly I've, yeah. I've done work with thousands of men at this point and it never ceases to amaze me just how um just how much i can relate and just how much we in the circle it, something beautiful that happens is we we bring one man in he shares, he goes through some type of a process. And I'll often say, like, how many of you guys resonate with what's being shared here? No matter what the story is, it's really like we, re we resonate to the emotion mm -hmm. of the experience more so than the story that we create or the meaning that we give it. But we can resonate with the emotion. And I find that to be incredibly, again, empowering and and like helpful, helpful in the, the process of, in, of undoing. Because if I can see one of my brothers like letting go of this of this parental betrayal it's like maybe i can let go of a little bit of it too and that's yeah. just like it's a natural thing that happens uh and alternatively i think it happens the other way and that's how they play us mm -hmm. they go like like oh well let's let's condition these folks to hate each other and then they'll get on that frequency 